Okay, so I'm going to show you how to get the UAB VMS console application. And again, that application is designed for you to be able to interact with the Eclipse scripting API without actually having to write your own code and compile things. And um, all the plumbing will be done for you. And you can, you can interact with the framework in real time and see variables that you've declared and things like that. Okay, so to get started, you're going to want to go to the variandeveloper.codeplex.com site. And this is just a, a place where people are uh, talking about things uh, concerning the API and there's source code available um, for you to download. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be looking at the source code in the section Eclipse Scripting API Projects UAB.VMS.Console. So in order to uh, get some source code, you're going to have to download this whole pack here. And the way that you do that is just click on the download button. If you click that, you can save it out to your desktop. In that case, I've already done that, and I have it right here. And I've, if you right-click and extract all, you can uh, extract it to your desktop. I'm going to open that up, and here's what the structure looks like. So you're going to want to go into the Eclipse Scripting API folder, Projects, and then you'll see the UAB VMS console. Uh, it's actually two different, different projects uh, combined into one solution. This is a Visual Studio solution, so you're going to need Visual Studio installed on the box that you're doing this on. You're also going to need um, the uh, Eclipse Scripting API on this computer. So you can't do this remotely. It's got to be on a uh, basically an Eclipse FAT client. So once you have all of those things set up, you just double-click the uh, solution. I'll open Visual Studio. And if it's your first time opening it, um, you might get a little pop-up that says, um, are you sure you trust this? It's from uh, the internet, basically. And um, you can uh, make the call on that, but you're not going to be able to do anything unless you say OK. So here are the two projects. Um, the one that's actually the main application is this UAB VMS console. And you don't have to do anything. Um, you can just press start and it will run. But just to show you a potential problem is um, these are the references. If you open up the references of the project and you scroll down, just look at these VMS references and make sure there's no yellow symbol over here, which means that it can't find uh, the, um, the DLLs that it needs. So I'm going to go ahead and press start, and that will launch uh, in debugging mode. And so this is the console. The console is basically like the command line where you can type in variables. I'll show you. Let me just make a variable called uh, test. Make it a string. And to actually execute code, you hold the shift button when you press enter, and it will execute. So to show you that it's a REPL, I'm going to type in the variable again, hold shift, enter, and we can see what the variable was storing. And so that's the benefit of a REPL is you can interact in real time and see kind of what's under the covers without having to compile the application and run it and hope for the best. So the cool thing about this is I've integrated the API into this. So you can do, um, you can make an application, create application. This is the entry point um, to getting into uh, whether you're doing uh, the console or not. This is how you get in. This is normally where you type in your password because I don't want you to see my password. I made a special variable for this demo. So you all actually have to type in your password there. So I hold shift, press enter, and it creates the app. Just to show you that I'm connected to the database, I'm going to make a, another variable called pats. And I'm going to do app.patient summaries. And we can use uh, the where clause from link to do something pretty cool. So I'm going to select all patient summaries where the patient ID starts with Z underscore. And I'm going to turn that into a list. So in, in our case, those are our physics patients. So I'm going to hold shift, press enter. That's now a variable. I'm going to type pats.count. See how many I have. Shift enter. It says eight. If I want to see more details, I can do pats, shift, enter, and it will print out 
in uh, JSON format so I can see all the variables. Uh, I can also see their indices in the list. So I can see 0, 1, uh, and so forth. So I'm going to pick this uh, EDW commissioning patient, which is number 6. So I am going to do it this way. Let me make a temporary variable, pat. That's going to be my sixth. Um, shift enter. And then in the scripting API, you actually have to open a patient. So we're looking at a patient summary, but it does not have courses or plans. So if I want to open up the real patient, I'll need to call my app variable and say open patient. And that requires a patient summary as an input. So wait, I just stored one. Shift enter. And I have it just to show you I've got it. I'm going to print the ID of that. We can see I've got the right person. Excellent. So another thing you can do here is you can um, you can make another variable like courses now. Um, if you ever wanted to see what was available, you can just type your um, variable, EDW in this case, and press the period, and you'll see all of the different variables that are inside of that. So you can explore the API and say, uh, well, I know I want the courses. And um, in this case, I'm going to select from the courses, I'm going to select their IDs. I'll make that into a list as well. Shift enter. Oops. Let's see. EDW courses select C. Oh, I think I have a semicolon there. I'm recording this on a pretty low resolution monitor. Let's try that. There we go. Shift enter again. So you can see that when you do make a mistake, um, it doesn't crash. It will just print out an error for you so you can figure out um, what the problem was. So I'm going to just um, get my courses. Shift enter. I can see what courses I have. Okay, now those courses, that's not, those aren't the actual courses. Remember, I did a select statement. I selected the ID. So that's really a list of strings. So if I wanted something like the plans, I would need to go back to the real patient courses. And from all the courses, I could select many. C dot, uh, C plan setup. Setups. A plan setups are all of the plans within a course. So what this will do is it'll select all the plans from all of the courses and concatenate them for me. To list, shift enter. Okay, when it's calling the database and it's getting a lot of information, you can see it pause for just a second. Um, you won't. You'll see this also in your apps as you're building them. It's actually making database calls and building the variable. Uh, you know the actual structures underneath so it's uh, it's looking at apparently there are a lot of plans um, in this patient as soon as it's done um, there'll be a cursor uh, should should pop down on the bottom and there it goes okay so just to see apparently there are a ton of plans let's look and see what they were the plans select p dot p dot id to list. Oops. Oh yeah. So there's lots of EDW configurations, and so we can see those in there. You can keep descending down into the hierarchy, and you can explore the Eclipse scripting API this way. And for every variable, again, all you have to do is um, look at the, if you press the dot, you'll be able to see um, the, the properties and methods within that variable. So you can explore it this way. And that's what, really what this is designed for. Um, you could do some um, simple uh, analysis uh, with data or something, but this is really just designed for you to explore the API in an easy way. Okay, um, so happy coding and uh, feel free to post to the CodePlex site if you have any questions.